If you figure out how to effectively invite prospects, you're going to be fine. If you don't, it's over. The gateway skill. Either you go through the gate or the gate closes. The good news is it's learnable. We're going to give you some fundamentals that every single one of you can learn and you'll enjoy and you'll have fun. Won't be any problem. A lot of people think in order to be a good inviter, you need to have reputation and influence. That's not true. You don't have to have reputation and influence to be a good inviter. You just have to have the skills to be a good inviter. I want to change you from a hunter to a professional, from a predator to a professional. We're more like farmers than we are hunters. We grow relationships. We grow people. We push people up. We nurture people. Right? We're, a lot of you have the mentality, I need to invite them because i got to get them. I need to get me one more. <laughs> Nobody wants to get got. They want to build a relationship, but they don't want to be the one that, hey, let me show you the new distributor I just got. They're going, you're holding me up on a string, you know? <laughs> Kinda. Bring him to the meeting, carry him around. See a picture of me and the one I just bagged? Let me give you the professional mindset when it comes to inviting. There's a mindset that professionals go into. When I was, um, I struggled with inviting at the beginning. I made up in numbers for what I lacked in skill because I would just invite, 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 invite. Now I blew through a lot of people. I lost a lot of good people that would have been amazing because I, my skills were so bad but I made up for it in numbers. Now, there's a better way to do that. The professional, I, I, one of the things that I've learned to do over the course of my career is study what works. There's a lot of stuff that sounds good. Sounds really clever. Like when objections and stuff, people love to have these clever answers. Those don't really work, though. You try the clever thing, and, and everybody ends up a little bit mad. So clever didn't really work there. There's clever little approaches, there's clever little invites. The clever stuff never worked, really. So what I did is I studied the most successful inviters I, I could find. And I listened to them invite. I watched what they did. I took good notes. I went to their trainings, but you know what I found out about top earners? They have a very difficult time actually communicating what they actually do. It's not about trying to mislead you. It's just they just don't have the ability to do it. They struggle with saying, here's how I actually did it. So this is, we're, we're going to talk about this weekend, is how the top earners actually do it. And they start with a mindset. Their mindset is to build a relationship, not to get a distributor. That's their mindset. To build a friendship. People do business with friends. Mindset is about relationships, not about... And people will sense if you're trying to build a relationship or if you're a shark. They'll sense it. Their goal is to educate people and inspire people. Education and inspiration, that's their goal. They want people to be better because of their interaction. They want people to be inspired and see a bigger picture of their lives. They want people to understand what it is that they have to offer. It's about understanding. It's about education. See, is that different than what most people think? i got to go get this person. Now, build a relationship. Educate them. Inspire them, yes. Educate them for sure. Build a relationship. Build a friendship. No matter what. Their, uh, their uh, process is to, number one, build trust, and number two, transfer belief. 
Trust is like a bridge from one side to the other. So they build the bridge by not being a shark. They build a bridge by being a friend. They build a bridge by educating. They build a bridge by being a genuine human being. They build a bridge by not jumping on them at inappropriate times. And then once the bridge is built, they transfer belief. See, what most people try and do is they try and transfer belief before the bridge is built. And if you do that, you got to go through like 50 times the numbers to get the same result. If the bridge is built, transferring belief's no problem. You could just walk it across the bridge, drive it across the bridge, whatever. But if the bridge isn't built, you got to use like a catapult to try and shoot it over the water to get to the other side, and sometimes it might hit pretty hard. You know what I mean? Imagine a big water balloon with your story. Because you got to get it over there because you haven't built trust yet. Yeah, I got the information. I don't think it's for me. Professionals don't even really pitch. They just don't. They're not pitch machines. Those are the amateurs out there. I've never met a person I didn't prospect. They don't pitch. They build a relationship. They educate. They inspire. They build trust. They transfer belief. And it becomes a natural downhill gravitational pull towards your opportunity instead of pushing the rock uphill. That's what amateurs do. That's what posers do. They're pushing rock uphill all the time. Professionals don't pitch. Also, professionals try as much as they can to get face-to-face. Why do they try to get face-to-face? -face? Because it builds trust. Personal interaction changes relationships. Most major decisions in your life, you didn't do completely over the phone. You probably got face-to-face -to, -face to be able to have some type of conversation. Why? Because you needed to have some trust built before you made that big decision. There's some leaders in network marketing that like to say, never do a one-on-one. -on -one. That's an example of one of those things that sounds clever and isn't what people do. Not the successful people. The successful people find opportunities to get in front of other people of influence, build a relationship, get face-to-face -face whenever possible, build trust, transfer belief. That's the mindset of leaders. You know, you notice that the million-dollar earners are going, yep, uh-huh, yep, yep, lived that, done that, been there, got it. I hope everybody's hearing. That's what they're all saying. All right. You're going to be inviting to one of two things, in my experience. You're going to be inviting to one of two things. The first is an event. An event is most effective. If you can get a person to attend an event, the chances of them joining your business is very good. Why is it so good? You have the phys physical interaction with the person. It builds trust. They can see it's working. There's social proof. Other people are doing it too. People just like them are doing it too. There's excitement. There's a certain energy. There's urgency. Other people are taking the, they're, they're stepping forward and they're signing up. Uh, maybe I should too. See, the event is great. It's, it's, it's the most effective. However, the downside to events is they're difficult to schedule. Especially for the new person. You just, it's too big a leap to get somebody to take a big chunk out of their life and come and attend an event for a first exposure. 
People don't show up. You know why most people quit network marketing? They made a big invitation, nobody showed up. And they went, I can't take it. I just can't handle it. The no-shows kills people. That's going to discourage anybody. Knocks out more people than any other thing. So here's the second thing that you invite people to. A tool of some sort. A tool. Now what do I mean by a tool? Could be a CD, audio. Could be a story. Could be a DVD. Could be a magazine, brochure, website, online presentation of some sort, product sample. Could be a whole number of things. Tools are a much better first step. Much better. To, what's our goal? Go back to our goals. Building trust, transferring belief, building a relationship, education, inspiration. This is the gateway. We have to think about what the majority of people can do. I had a little bit of a knack for getting people to events when I first started. That's the reason why I'm still here today. But I wasn't able to duplicate that. I couldn't get other people to have the same level of success that I had getting people to events, even though they were very effective for me. And because of that, my duplication never went anywhere. So tools are a much better first step. Every company has different tools. Let me talk to you why tools are incredibly powerful. Can you give me the uh, Elmo guys? Great. It's the power of third party. This is a fundamental. If you, learn that, if you don't learn this fundamental, you're going to have problems. If you learn this fundamental, you're going to be fine. Third party. Here's what most people in network marketing do. Posers and amateurs both. Here's you. Here's the prospect. They go to the prospect and they try and give all the information. Let me tell you about my product. Let me tell you about my opportunity. Let me tell you about what's going on. Let me tell you about our leadership group. Let me tell you about the support. Let me tell you about this exciting campaign we got going on. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. The problem with first party is they most of the time know you and they know you're not an expert. So they're going to be very critical, cynical, they're going to ask a million questions, they're going to throw up a million objections and because of that you're going to have a difficult time getting them to take you seriously. It's the reason why we have, when, when a celebrity endorses a product on television, we go, ooh, maybe I should get that. Even though we kind of know that the celebrity, you, you know Peyton Manning's not driving a Chevy. <laughs> He's just not. Or Buick, or whatever. He's not driving a Buick. He might have one in the garage because of the contract or whatever. We know he's not driving up Buick. He's just not. But it's a cool commercial anyway. He makes it interesting, makes it more valuable, right? So <clears throat> if you go first party, you're only going to have a certain result. You're going to get shot down most of the time. The only people you can have success with in first party are people you have influence over. So on a scale of 1 to 10, if you have a 10 in influence, you, 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 can, you can talk to the 8s and the nines and whoever else is below you. You know, you're the President of the United States. You can talk to a lot of people. Hey, come with me. And they go, okay, I'll come with you. But then they go talk to people. Can they talk to tens if they're an eight? Not with this approach. They gotta go talk to what? Sevens, sixes. Sevens are a little close, you know. There might be some ego involved. They might have to go down to fives to be sure of it. So they go to the five and say, hey, you want to do this? Five says, well, chance to work with you? I'm in. But now what are the fives going to do? They got to talk to fours, but not really fours, because there's ego involved with fours. So they got to kind of go to threes. So they go to a three, and they say, you know, hey, you want to join me? And they go, I don't have the money. Well, let's find the money. All right, we find the money. Get them in. Now, now what do I do? Go talk to people. Well, who are they going to talk to? 
the twos and the ones, and they come back up line and they say, you know what? No one can afford to join this opportunity. No one can afford it. The, 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 the price of entry is way too expensive. The monthly auto ship is completely out of control. It has to do with a philosophy problem. It doesn't have to do with a reality problem. There's plenty of money in the world. There's plenty of influential people in the world. You just have to have an approach where you can talk to anybody. Not only I could talk to you, but you could talk to her, and she could talk to him, and he could talk to him. And You don't have to have a certain uh, skill set in order to be able to have success. When it comes to influence, I mean. You don't have to have a certain amount of influence to have success. Here's what the professionals do. If you want to have duplication... Now, I will tell you, in my first three years in this business, I rebuilt my organization seven times. Seven times from scratch. And here's what happens in this business. Have you ever heard the story? Here's you. And what you're going to do is you're going to recruit five people. And then you're going to teach your five to each get five. So now you've got 25 people, 30 people in the group. And then... All you get, it's the simplest thing in the world. <laughs> All you have to do is show those people how to do the same thing. And now you have 125. And it doesn't stop there. <laughs> Guess where it stops? You get to live in that box of about 30 people. If you've been struggling, you can't get it going. I mean, I'd build it up. I'd get, you know what I learned? I learned anybody can get five. You can just decide I'm getting five. I don't care what it is. <laughs> Tell your spouse I'm getting five. I'm doing it. And you can do the next step, too. You can go to your five and say, you're getting five. <laughs> Pick up the phone. I'm sitting here until you call somebody. You're getting five, and you're getting five, and you're getting five, and you're getting five. And I don't want to hear about it. You can do that. You can, and you'll build a team of about 30 people. But then you can't tell those 25 in the next row that they're getting five. Can't do it. So I'd build, I'd, I'd get, <laughs> I'd get five, six people recruited. And, you know, the story I tell you, you spin the, you've seen this plates, you spin the plates, a vaudeville act, put it on a stick, you spin the plate. Ready to go, Mike? Yes, I am. Put him on the stick, spin the plate. Hey, Mike's going, woohoo. I have a downline. Yes, this is awesome. Then you go to the next one, get him up. You ready to go? See, Mike, he's spinning. You can go too. You got two. I got two. I got two. I'm spinning them both. Then you can get five or six, right? You can get them spinning just on your own effort. Now, here's what happens some of them spin better than others, some of them don't spin very good at all. Maybe I got the wrong person. They're not very good. And it's fun to hang out with the ones that spin easy. Oh, they're excited. They got a good attitude. So you hang out there over spinning over there. And you go over there. You see the one that just got started. You got Mike. He's going spin. He's about ready to drop. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Whoa, come on, Mike. Get back on the call. Come on. Try that product again. Come to the company convention. Come on. Right? Then that's just with five or six. And they said, they told me this was part-time. This is not part-time. It's ridiculous. It's not. That's level one, folks. That's your front line. You know what your front line's going to make you do? Spin their downlines plates, too. You're spinning 30 plates. You're running around. Nobody's doing anything without you. Come on. Will you spin by yourself? I'm so tired of this. I have to get you up in the morning. I have to put you to bed at night. 
get on the call, use the product for crying out loud. Why do I have to call you every day? True or not true? Sickening. So you finally just say, you know what? Enough. I'm going over here with these self-spinners, my latest ones I just brought in. You guys you to fend for yourself for a week, for crying out loud. And you have a little internal mental temper tantrum. Have you had that? I'm sick of you people. Right? So you're hanging out over here. Hey, we're having fun. And now you hear smash, 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 smash. So you say to these people, ignore that sound. <laughs> right. They just lost the faith. That's all. <laughs> all right? That's what you have to deal with if you're in first party. First party's terrible. It's awful. It's no fun. If you want to live in this box for your entire career, Stay engaged in first party. It will feed your ego and it will steal for your, from your future. You'll feel good because you've got a posse and they're looking at you and you're listening to you. And you have an entourage of people who follow you and hang on your every word. And after the meeting, you're in the corner with your little group. And <laughs> Let me tell you what we're going to do. Been there? Been with your little group in the corner? Then when you're done with the meeting, what do they do? They go to the casino. They're done with you. <laughs> All right. So if you want to break out of that box, that's what I did seven times. Build it up to about 30, lost it. 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 Build it up to my screen, lost it. <laughs> it's back here. There it is. We good? All right, good. So, if you want to break out of that box, and I really did. I thought I understood third party. I trained it. I thought I got it my first three years, but I didn't really get it. Here's what third party is for those of you who might want to figure that out. Third party, give me some examples of third party. CD, DVD, three-way phone call, the product, uh, upline, uh, a home meeting, uh, an event, brochure, a webinar, sizzle call, all right, uh, and pro, um, a story is third party because it's not you. Here's the short definition of what third party is. Anything that's not you. If it's you, it's you trying to be the expert. Your job is to go to the prospect and connect that prospect with a third party. That third party is the fact giver. It gives the information, lets people understand the product, the opportunity, the story, whatever, what's possible for them. It helps to educate them. And if they see an opportunity, they'll come back to you and you can show them how they could do the same thing. Here's the rule. If your lips are moving, write this down. If your lips are moving, you need to be pointing, reading, introducing, or telling a story. I'll say it again. If your lips are moving, you need to be pointing, reading, introducing, or telling a story. You don't get to give the facts ever. Not even when people become distributors. Talk about that in a second. People ask you a question, pointing, reading, introducing to something or someone else, or telling a story about something or someone else. That's your job. That's what professionals do. Ask the top earners, give me the secret, and they'll tell you a story. Ask them, if there's, you know, hey, when's the convention? They'll point you to a website. 
Ask them for what, what's in the product. They'll connect you with somebody who's got, you know, the brochure that explains the product. They just won't, they won't go there. They know it's a trap. If they go there, it's a trap. So let me give you an example. So um, third party, if your lips are moving, pointing, reading, or telling a story. Let me tell you why this is important. Um, I'm a white man. Mike here is a black man. How you doing, Mike? Um, are there issues between white and black in the world? Yes. Is it sometimes hard for a black man to listen to a white man or a white man to listen to a black man when it comes to opportunity? Yes. Is that same thing true from a man talking to a woman? Is that same thing true with a 20-year-old talking to a 50-year-old? Is the same thing true with a, a doctor talking to a ditch digger? Or vice versa. See what I'm saying? I'm just saying, here's the realities of our world. No one is exactly aligned. And let's say, see this screen up here, is the opportunity. And do we have a roaming camera or no? Can we do it or can't we? If you have enough cord, I'll come over there. I'll come over there. Sorry, Mike. All right, let me use Tyler. Come here, Tyler. How you doing, pal? Good. All right, um, can you go handheld or no? Yeah. Cool, perfect. Have a seat. Go right behind Tyler's shoulder. Give him his point of view. Okay? Now let's say we're going to go to that screen over there. Sorry to just keep killing you. No, I'm going to go to this screen right here. Can you, can you get it so the screen is, and you can see the screen? Got it? Boy, look at how many screens. Cool. OK. Now, if I'm talking to Tyler, uh, actually, I'm not going to talk to Tyler. Switch around. I'm going to talk to Mimi. I'm talking to Mimi, man talking to a woman. OK, can, can you get down again? And I want you to be able to see that screen, right? Can you see the screen? He can see the screen. Okay. Now I'm talking to Mimi, and I'm sharing the opportunity. And I'm saying, Mimi, you would be great at this. You'd be unbelievable. You'll be able to tear this thing up. The opportunity is on that screen, okay? You'd be unbelievable. Can you see, can you see right now what's on that screen? Can't, she can't see it. Why can't, I, can't she see it? Because I'm in the way. She has to see it through me. This guy that she may or may not relate to. Okay? She has to see it through me. So no matter who you're talking to, they have to see it through you, and that, they might not see it. You're reducing your chances by like 90% if you take a first-party approach. So what I need to learn how to do is introduce myself to Mimi in a way that builds trust, and watch this. Watch the screen. I need to move out of the way, point, read, introduce, tell stories. I need to drive her to that exposure so she can see it. And she turns to me and she asks me a question. Well, I'm glad you asked. And I jump right back in front. And she can't see it again. See what I mean? The job as third parties get out of the way. Get out of the way. Resist the urge to sound intelligent. Show off with the, you know, the stuff you read last night. Tell me what's in the product. Oh, I can't wait because it's got this and it's got this and it's all natural and it does that and it's unbelievable what it does with this. Stop it. Say, well, there's a brochure that explained it all better than I could and you drive them to the exposure that way. You see what I'm saying? You get it? Now, if you do third party that way, now I can go to some, if I'm a six, I can go to a 10 and talk to a 10 if I invite them properly, if I do it with skill. A man can talk to a woman, a woman can talk to a man, people from different races, backgrounds, cultures, experiences, countries, can talk to everybody. Now if I use a third party approach by getting out of the way, how many think I have a better chance with Mimi? Better chance, okay? If I go first party, my chances are really low. Thanks for being uh, <laughs> flexible, I appreciate it. 
Is that good? Third party is critical. Third party is critical. I'm going to give you one more thing and then we're going to go with Ray. Let me give you the formula for financial independence and network marketing. The formula for financial independence and network marketing. Would you like to know what it is? <clears throat> Here's what it is. Not if we get back there. All right, I'll catch up. Power of third party, formula for financial independence. <clears throat> The formula is, if you want to be free, if you want to get past the 30 people in your team that are so dependent on you and dying at every minute, plates smashing to the ground all around you, here's the formula. Your ability to get a large group of people to do a few simple things consistently over an extended period of time. We'll get it, we'll get it, relax. It's in the book, you'll find it. Your ability to get a large group of people to do a few simple things consistently over an extended period of time, that's it. See, there's a big saying in network marketing, which is, if it is to be, it is up to me. As far as your passion, dedication, decision, yes. But building a large organization, no. If it is to be, it's up to a large group of people doing a few simple things consistently over an extended period of time. That's what it's for. I used to think if it is to be, it's up to me. But that's, if you want to live in the box of 30, then it is up to you. If you want to be free, it's not. This is the formula. And I used to, I went from I'll do it all. Bring it all. I'll do all the presentations, all the trainings. I'll do the calls. Bring your list. We'll even, I'll even call the people on your list for you. I got, you know, a brand new distributor sitting right next to me. I'm calling you because they're too afraid to. I'd do it all. And then I went to having a few people doing amazing things. I had a, you know, inner circle just doing unbelievable stuff. And that doesn't get you freedom either. Then I finally learned that using tools, your ability to get a large group of people to do a few simple things consistently over an extended period of time is, is the ticket to freedom. Really. So rule number one is... Don't ever, ever, ever answer a fact-based question. Point, read, introduce, tell stories. Use third party. Even after the distributor joins your business, still point, read, introduce, tell stories to them. Because you'll be teaching them what to do with their people, their prospects, everybody else. Got it? You understand this? If you could absorb this, here's what happened to me. I went from a revolving door of constantly having about 30 people on my team to Eric. And over the course of my career, I probably recruited, I don't, not, not a huge number of people, but maybe uh, 500. That's over 25 years. Not that much as a professional, you think about it. And I've built organizations totaling over 400,000 distributors around the world. How? The formula for financial independence. That's how. How did I get free? I went, okay, I'm going to trust this. Five, 25, 125? What? I finally had people, after three years, I finally had people in my team I didn't know. It's a great, it's, a, it's an amazing experience. Some of you know what I'm talking about. That first time somebody comes up to you at a convention and says, I want you to know I'm a leader and I'm in your downline. I've never met you, but I'm in your group. I just wanted to say thank you for the inspiration. And you want to say thank you for not making me spin that plate. <laughs> thank you so much. You did it on your own. I love you. We were talking about the formula for financial independence. Remember, your ability to get a large group of people to do a few simple things consistently over an extended period of time. Right? 
Your ability to get a few people to do a you know, a large group of people to do a couple things consistently, right? I got to tell you, this philosophy, once I got it, it changed everything. There's a couple campaigns, handful of campaigns that changed my life. I want to share some of them with you. With me? I'm going backwards again. Sorry. Tool campaigns. Talk about third-party tools. Tool campaigns changed my life. Really. Tool campaigns can change your life with your business. Because when you think about the formula, you're trying to get a large group of people to do a couple simple things. What's more simple than a tool? Get somebody to listen to a tool. Get somebody to review some material. Get somebody to do something. In 1990... The company I was with came out with a video cassette called Living the Dream. It was the first produced opportunity presentation anybody had ever seen that I knew of. It wasn't just somebody recording some live presentation. It was a produced, nicely done. There's some celebrities in there. There's some sports stars in there giving testimonials, and you had person after person telling their story. It was really inspiring. And the guy who came up with it, some, someday I'll have him up here talking, but his name was uh, Earl Shaw. And Earl, a good old boy from Texas, Earl created a training on how to use, how to pass out, get those videotapes, pass them out, get them viewed with enthusiasm. And that very quickly became our daily method of operation. That became all we did. That's all we thought about. Who can you show the video to today? Who can you show the video to this week? Drive over to somebody's house, jump up and down on their front porch and say, I'm so excited, I'm so excited, i got to show you something. Pop it in and push play and sit down and shut up. When they're done, ask a few questions. What did you like best about what you just saw on a scale of 1 to 10? Where do you see yourself as far as this opportunity? And are you prepared to get started? That's it. And we did that like you can't believe. We played that video and it went, I, for, I had my first six figure a year experience from that video. It helped me create duplication. So you got to think about, and, and, and here was the key to it. There was nothing else taught. Demonstrate the product and show this video. There was no other distractions. There was not a menu of 15 things that you could choose from. It was just how many. The video cassette was $15 each. Back then, think about that. It's like a $50 DVD right now. Okay? That one changed my life. Next one was an audio campaign. This was amazing, amazing. In September, the, the, the company I was with in, in 1990 hit a brick wall. They, they went from $800 million a year in sales to $200 million in a year, in 18 months. I mean, just <laughs> They eventually morphed into Juice Plus, but I mean, it, it, people were diving off the ship. It was ugly. So in 1992, myself and a group of people, we joined another company. And the company was doing a million dollars a month in sales, and they'd, they'd done about 10 million the year before. And I understood the power of video, but I was intrigued with the possibility of audio. And I'll tell you why I was intrigued. I listened to um, another, a, a presenter from another company, his story. He had an audio cassette. And it was him live telling the story. And that audio cassette was so interesting and so intriguing to me. I didn't want to join his company, but I really liked the audio. So I went, huh, I wonder if we created an audio cassette for our company. And there was nobody else to do it, so I created one. I literally wrote the script word for word, borrowing heavily from everyone in the profession, creating a really compelling, about 20-minute long 
audio cassette called A Career Choice. It was the name of the company, dot, 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 A Career Choice. Okay? And the front of that audio cassette was the presentation, me doing the presentation, and I did it in a studio, and we did it with nice music, and I did it with a lot of energy, and it was, it was tight. It was really good. And the other side was just filled with testimonials of people who had life-changing experiences, about 20 minutes worth of testimonials. And I got to tell you something. I miss audio cassettes. I miss them. There was something about audio cassettes for network marketing that I, I really miss, and I'll tell you why. You put an audio cassette into your car, it starts where you, wherever it starts. And then when it's done, it flips over. And then it keeps going. Then when it's done, it flips over again. And it keeps going. When it's done, it flips over again. Right? So you get this value of repetition. If it's, if it's entertaining enough, people listen over and over and over and over and over again. They'll keep listening. So we created this audio cassette and we come at, came up with a campaign that was stellar. Our can't, we, the audio cassette was 50 cents each, which was exactly our cost. 50 cents each, it came in a little uh, cardboard sleeve. The audio cassette was inside the sleeve. People could put a sticker with their contact information or they could write it on there. And in eight months, we moved a million audio cassettes into the market. A million audio cassettes. You know how we did it? We told everybody, start with 100. Everybody who joins starts with 100 audios. Your job is to get the 100 audios out into the marketplace. Listen to somebody in your first week to 10 days. Your job is to get to everybody as quick as possible. Say, there's something amazing you got to listen to. Listen to this and call me as soon as you're done. And hand it off. If I gave you this audio cassette, would you listen? Here it is. Right? So... They'd start with 100, and then we taught them two a day after that. 100 blasts to get it going, and then two a day. So if you have 1,000 people in your organization, all of a sudden that's 100,000 in 10 days. That company went from a million a month in sales to $14 million a month in sales in four months. A lot of leadership, a lot of effort, a lot of momentum, but I'm telling you, that tool tore it up. It was, and they were everywhere. People joined the company because they bought a used car and one was in the glove box. I saw them in overhead bins in the airplanes. I saw them on carousels going by themselves at the airport, around and around. We taught people two a day, get them out there, your ability to get a big group to do a couple things, right? You cannot go home and go to sleep until you get two out. Do what you got to do. So there's people who literally, they would get home and they say, I only got, they, they put two in their pocket at the beginning of the day. They just didn't go home until, you know, didn't finish it. They would just, they'd own Vegas. They'd just go around, see those people, those little pamphlets. They'd do that with the audio cassettes. They didn't care. The goal was to send them out and let them have a life of their own. See what happens. There were people, literally, one of the top earners in that company, you know how they joined? They went to the gas station, they put the thing into their gas, in, into their car, they squeezed the nozzle and they looked up and on top of the gas pump was an audio cassette. They grabbed the audio cassette, put it in their car, pushed it, put it in, pushed play, Two weeks later, they called the person because they'd listened to it 30 times. Became one of the top 10 earners in that company. Audio program changed my life. 100 to start, two a day. Remember the combo pad, the brick? Some of you remember the brick. I was with the company in 1999. We created a combination pack that was one part video cassette, one part audio one part magazine put into a self-mailer package, and the goal was to get those out, bang, 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 put them in the mail or hand them to somebody, and if I would you. What did that do for growth, remember? Was there anything else that we did? It was pretty much that. It was really laser focused. So think about in your organization, what few things can you use with tools to invite people to? We're gonna teach you how to invite in this session. 
to invite people to in order to get a large number of people to do it? Do you have a CD? You know, I, I'm a big believer, personally, in tangible tools. Yes, the Internet's good for speed. But tangible builds trust on a much higher level than the Internet does, as far as network marketing is concerned. My suggestion to you is either your company has it or you should work with them to encourage it to come up with a simple centralized tool that you can drive as a, as a basic method of operation. Get 100, two a day, inexpensive, blast it out, and create a campaign where everybody knows exactly what they need to do. Okay? All right. Video campaign I did in 2006. Exploded growth. I made uh, $7 million between 2005, 2011. Big part of that was a video campaign that we created there. Okay, let's talk about inviting. There's four emotional rules for inviting. And I will tell you right now, inviting is emotional. So you've got to, you know, here's what the professionals do. Rule number one, you have to emotionally detach from the outcome. Emotionally detach from the outcome. Your goal is education You know, uh, um, inspiring somebody, teaching something that they, they, they don't know, giving someone some education on something that they don't know. Your job is to try and transfer that information to them. Regardless, the professionals don't really treat someone like they're hunted. They just go to them, they're emotionally detached, they build new relationships like we talked about. Number two, be yourself. Some people turn into a completely different person. And they're just not themselves. So be yourself, but be your best self. Be your most energetic self. Be your most passionate self. Be your most positive self. But be yourself. Number three, bring your passion. What did Mike say? People are paying more attention to the passion than they are to the words. That's totally true. And number four, posture is important. Why did I talk to you about these things earlier today? You have the gift. Have compassion. Don't allow somebody to kick you in the face. Just don't allow it. Just don't be that person that would even welcome it. Your posture. Your, be strong. Be positive. And I will tell you, when I first started, I was none of these things. I was emotionally very attached, especially to family and friends. If they didn't join, I was just depressed. I was not myself. I you know, tried to be this other person. My passion, I was more interested in the right words than I was the passion. And my posture was apologizing for network marketing at every turn. Didn't even really realize it. It was on a subconscious level. And part of it is I was insecure because I was 20. 24. I didn't think anybody would listen to me and I had 18 jobs and I was I was more attracted to what the past or the future the, the past I was living the past I was owning the past so anyway 